la 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 This is the song La Donna e Mobile, composed by Giuseppe Verdi for his opera Rigoletto. I'm sure you all recognized it. Back in the 19th century, Giuseppe Verdi knew he was onto a winner, so he actually kept the entire score secret and didn't even show it to the lead tenor until two days before the first performance of the opera. And he was right to do this, because within a week of the first performance, the sheet music was being widely sold and transcribed, and many people were putting on performances of this song, which has now gone into the popular lexicon and is widely used by, for example, soccer fans around the world. What we have here is an argument about intellectual property. And the reason why it's a complicated argument is because there are three quite distinct and different ways of understanding what intellectual property is. If we think that intellectual property is like any other kind of property, then it must be, like other kinds of property, perpetual. That would mean in this case that Verdi's estate would still own the rights to the song. And this would mean that if, for example, as a soccer fan, you chanted a chant which used the tune from this famous song, you would be violating the intellectual property of Verdi's estate and you would be subject to penalties. It would mean that any time anybody anywhere wanted to use the music or to perform the song, they would have to pay a royalty. If on the other hand, the kind of intellectual property which we are more familiar with applied, the time-limited property of copyright, then Verdi would have enjoyed a copyright in the song for a limited number of years from the time of the first performance. It might have been for, say, 25 years, it might have been for his own lifetime and a certain number of years thereafter, but it would ultimately have expired. Once the copyright had expired, it would then in fact become part of the public domain and freely accessible for anyone who wished to make use of it. The third possibility is the one which in fact did apply because there was no intellectual property in Italy at the time when Verdi composed his opera. That is that as soon as he had published the song by having a public performance in an opera house, it became freely available for anyone who wanted to use it, to develop it, to amend it, to perform it. Now, that in fact was the case, but it did not stop Verdi from making a considerable amount of money out of Rigoletto as of his other operas. That's because he was famous as the creator of the song, he was able to play upon that, and many people would willingly pay a premium to hear the song and other songs in the great opera performed by his own company or by people that he gave official approval to. And so this suggests that in fact, uh, given this real-life case, there's no need to have that kind of intellectual property to encourage artistic creativity of this kind. I hope you really enjoyed this. Click on one of these links here to watch more and learn more. If you want to do more and more than watch videos, then click on these links here to find out about more student opportunities. La 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 Sir, it's over. Everyone's gone home. Right. Okay.